Hey everyone, it's your boy Norrenrad89 here, back with my buddy Steve. I know it's been a couple weeks, but we're back to nowhere here to discuss the final four episodes of season one. So it's going to be very fun. So Steve, how are you feeling? Are you excited? I am always excited and ready to talk about this show. Uh, you know, we got like an extra dose because it was an odd number of episodes. Yeah. <laughs> so we're like, all right, four episodes to get through, which is I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah it's exciting because it was it was a good fun four episodes to do a lot of good variety and like i said this is how it'll typically be yeah so for our like finale episodes for each season we're gonna do four and the nice chunk just to get them done and everything <laughs> yeah yeah and i think yeah i think every episode is the same number right you said yeah i think all the seasons there are 13 episodes yeah i believe so so it'll kind of be like this every time yeah mm -hmm. uh until we cover the movie yeah, the movie. Yep, that's going to be exciting, too. Oh, can't wait. There's been a lot of good Courage content. So shall we get into the first segment of our first episode? Let's do it. All right. So Heads of Beef is our first segment, and that is while a sick Muriel stays home on the couch, Eustace takes Courage with him, and they go out for hamburgers at a local diner run by a seemingly friendly couple of pigs wandering wandering into their basement however courage begins to think that it may not be a cow's meat being served there so what do you think of this episode how did you feel a lot of kind of texas chainsaw massacre maybe yeah. motel hell vibes <laughs> it, it, it was it was it was a funny sort of dark humor kind of episode um it reminded me you ever, do you watch bob's burgers yes i love bob's burgers yeah remember the pilot <laughs> Oh my God! Really? Yeah, I think so. I think I remember the pilot. Yeah, they thought they were. Um, I forgot what the friend's name is, but he has the funeral home next door. Yeah, yeah. And they thought he were, they were getting bodies from there to make the meat. <laughs> <laughs> um, this sort of reminded me a little bit of that, just because. Um, I mean, obviously, Courage came out years before, uh, but I loved it. <laughs> sort of like you said, the allusions to a very Texas chainsaw kind of cannibal-like story. Um, you know. Without actually mentioning cannibalism, I guess I guess it's technically not cannibalism because they're pigs. Yeah, technically not. Yeah, I guess because they're well, they're feeding it to other people though. They are That's feeding true. it. To <laughs> That's true. They are feeding it. To well, supposedly. Um, supposedly, yeah. Yeah, but you know, I love that we just get this, this sort of random French pig couple. <laughs> Jean Bones. Jean, Jean Bones. <laughs> yeah, it was funny, and just like some of like the little jokes here and there, like. You know, courage opens up the beef patty, or opens up the burger on the beef patty, and has the like, face. Oh, God. Um, the wife's <laughs> voice was really funny. I don't know. If she, I don't think she had a French accent. She just had like a really weird accent that was had me laugh every time she spoke. Oh yeah, she was very cute, and she was like, "Oh, I want the dog." Like she was so cute, like just obsessed with courage and wanted him and stuff. But yeah, like she gave off the impression, like kind of like she wanted to eat him or taste him a little bit. <laughs> well, she never had dog before. <laughs> but yeah so it was fun to have that cute little couple like i said yeah once i watched this episode the total vibes like i was yeah like motel hell texas chainsaw massacre but it was cute that it was uh not really like evil people you know what i mean we got the kind of like misunderstanding you know between the two <laughs> yeah yeah i mean the twist being that they just want to make beef sculptures <laughs> I know for real, like design, like and Eustace is like, especially his, like the shape of his was like perfect when they show that, and they're like, oh, and then they eat the, they eat it too. It's like, ugh. yeah, <laughs> you know, would you want a sculpture made of beef of your head? I know that's weird, like, cause uh, I would, how would you even preserve something like that? That's you wouldn't even want to do that. You would basically, you would have to eat it. You would have to You'd eat have it to right eat away. It, you know? I mean... <laughs> Although, you know, any story like the Texas Chainsaw or whatever, you know, those houses are never really well kept because of all the meat hanging around. So I guess you don't really keep it. <laughs> or you keep it, but, you know, you don't really care, uh, yeah. you know, of the, the rot afterwards. <laughs> yeah. And this was kind of interesting, too, because we got, you know, Courage and Eustace going off on their own little adventure. You know, Muriel kind of sitting on the back burner, you know, chilling at the house and everything. So, <laughs> yeah, I like when they sort of pair off, you know, like Courage gets a lot of those episodes where it's either him and Muriel or him and Eustace. Um, and you get to see just a little more like of their just one on one dynamics, which are so very different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, no, but I thought I thought this one was funny. I think the humor landed um and it was a fun one to start with just to add to this oh, yeah. 
I like the oh, especially the um that weird like kind of guitar music, like the music when he rolled into the basement and he kind of discovers and he thinks it's what's yeah. happening is that music, that guitar riff going on. That was pretty cool. That reminded me of kind of like a almost like softcore, like Rob Zombie type thing you would hear oh, in one of his yeah. movies. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny you bring up the music, actually, because I'll bring it. There's there's a, a couple of episodes um, in here where I do bring up the score, and I feel like nice. it really, I don't know if it was just watching these four back-to-back -back episodes, but it really stood out to me, like the score and the attention to detail. I think they're finally getting, like, you can tell the creators are very comfortable in their niche now, you know what I mean? They know their characters, they're very comfortable with the main three, and now they're giving all the other side characters all this style, all this flair, and, like, you know, the, the, their own music, their own designs and stuff, so it's it's really cool. You can see that they're really coming into their own with the show. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have wrote down who the composer is um, for these episodes, because they, they did a, a really fun job. Yeah, Especially like, yeah, like, capturing tone and all of it. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you want to go and move on to part two? Yeah, segment two now. Segment two, we got Club Cats. So we got yeah. cats returning. So Maroon during a cruise, Courage and his owners once again run afoul of cats. Transformed at his spa into machines designed to fight for cats' amusement, Muriel places her ropes of rescue on Courage. Um, so... We'll start with your thoughts. What were your thoughts on this one? <laughs> I thought this one was kind of, I thought it was cute. Like Eustace was actually really cute in this one because the whole time they're like on the vacation thing and they're going on the vacation, right? And <clears throat> he just wants to sit in his chair. He's like, I'm not moving from my chair. He's like, I just want to sit in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> so that joke just kept getting to me. Like for real, that one was good. But then uh, the fact that we have cats returning, our returning villain, you know, this is uh, one of the characters that's been coming back now. And to, for his, like, plot to be this now, it's such a different plot from what he was in the first episode that we saw him. It's so weird. Yeah. Like, it's completely different. <laughs> totally different. Like, uh, you know, what is his motivation? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, <laughs> like, yeah, there are very different sort of plots and there were different um, schemes, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, yeah, to, like, have this sort of coliseum of machines fighting, you know, for funsies. I will say his, like, you know, hate for dogs returned, right? He had the no dogs yeah. allowed sign, so keeping courage separated from everything. <laughs> Maybe I, <laughs> I wonder, well, I guess he, how would he, how would he know for sure if the three of them are going to crash on that island, right? I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, although otherwise, you know, if the sign wasn't specifically for courage, maybe just you know, no dogs allowed, regardless, you know. And I think it was kind of cute that cats he had well, he had that with the suit, he had like a very uh fantasy island type design kind of look oh, to him, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, I've only seen a couple episodes of the original fantasy island, and then I saw that movie, which was really weird <laughs> that horror that movie, movie yeah. That I hadn't seen that. I still haven't seen that movie. I heard it was pretty off. I've seen a lot of the show because my mom loves the show. <laughs> yeah. There's a new one, too, I think, a new show. Um, yeah, I've heard there's a, new, there's a more recent one, too, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a little more mature than the original show, but I don't think it's like horror, like the Blumhouse movie. Yeah, that movie. Um, but, yeah, I mean, some funny moments. Like, you get, like, the Titanic illusion with the iceberg at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, that's um, true. That was so cute. <laughs> where they were like, "Oh wait, never mind. We're good." And yeah. then the tidal wave comes out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Not the only tidal wave in this batch of episodes either, though. That is true. We are going to see another tidal wave, and the the guy who uh, drives the ship or the the captain. He looks familiar, doesn't he? Pops up again too, like that guy with that yeah. specific big mustache. I think he's the pilot of a plane or something in one of the episodes or something. Was he also like a military guy, maybe? I think so. He's he's used it a couple times, like just that character, that design, like that short, stocky with the big mustache yeah. thing. <laughs> you know, he just yeah, he just the jobs never work out, so he's just always got a job hop, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, some other little things. Uh, I mean, again, we get the return of the motif of courage, saying what what I don't what I do for love. You know, that does pop up a lot in these last four episodes. That's true. Yeah. So they're really keeping that. I, I didn't realize that was one of his catchphrases, but I guess it is. 
<laughs> yeah, that, as we stand right now, that would probably be his catchphrase for sure, I would say. I also mm-hmm. like when he does those silly, goofy faces with the smiles with, like, the teeth when he gets hurt really bad or, like, flies into a wall and then he smiles and, like, goes... <laughs> like, well, that's actually going to play uh, into the season finale, which we're going to talk about um, once we get to it. But the What mm-hmm. I Do For Love really, I think, plays into, I think, what the overall theme of this season is. Yeah. Uh, but they really were sort of... You know, I, I, what I imagine was probably in the show Bible when they were getting the season together, <laughs> you know, but we'll get to it at the end. Um, but yeah, you know, and then <laughs> Courage, like, willingly becomes a helicopter. Yeah, helicopter, yep, yeah. yeah. All right, and then <laughs> <laughs> Muriel To out. stop the Thunderdome fighting, to stop all the fighting. That was... <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. But then, yeah, but then he leaves, he takes Muriel, but then leaves Eustace. Yeah. You know, so this is another dire ending for Eustace, who just keeps coming back somehow. I know. Yeah, somehow they come back. Yeah, there's a, some episodes where it's like the ending, you're like, oh, well, we just have to accept the fact that they did figure out some solution to that. We just didn't see. <laughs> yeah, it's just like the Star Trek reset, you know, like the, the ship gets oh. destroyed and then it's fine by the next episode. <laughs> you know. Those repairmen are really good over there. Mm-hmm. Well, they fix that <laughs> in later iterations, but the original show, the the um, I might why Shatner that version, yeah. We'll William Shatner, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They always ended up being all right. So, should we get on to our next segment or episode? Yeah, our next episode, yeah, yeah. So, let's see, let's open up that one. Oh, I have to scroll up because let's see, Club Cats was there. So, Night of the Were Mole is our next one. This was a really fun one. This was cool. Bitten by a vicious were mole, Muriel transforms into a similar creature under the light of the full moon. As Courage finds the original monster in hopes of a cure, Eustace faces his deranged wife, whom he has mistaken for, for a mice, and with his brittle wit and trusty mallet. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, what did you think of this one, Steve? How did this you was, feel? This was a solid episode. This was Definitely. really fun. Um, so this was one of the first ones that really stood out to me in terms of the score. I thought the score captured the B movie monster kind of moment really yep. well. I also was really impressed with the movement of the camera in this in this episode, um, especially as they were, you know animating like the trail of the mole the were mole um, yeah the, the camera was following it kind of across the farm and i was just really impressed like i thought that was so cool oh yeah there's specific moments especially like the cinematography like when they see muriel and you don't know if she has transformed or if they're just looking at her from the back and the camera's kind of tilted and she's like watching her favorite show and you yeah. don't know if it's going to be her, if she's transformed or not. Like, yeah, there's very specific certain vibes. Can't like said themes, cinematography, score all worked well together to really create this cool, very similar werewolf style type episode. But the mole was funny. That was wild. <laughs> well, I just love that the mallet. Like they were just playing whack a mole. Like, yeah, whack a mole. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I think the computer says he needed a mallet, right? Yeah. And then, well, then Eustace wanted a mallet. So, <laughs> and, then, so and then our final cure that we end up finding out, though, is that he needs a hair from the original mole, right? The mole that bit her. He needs mm-hmm. to get a hair from that mole and give it to Muriel to cure her. That's the cure. Yeah. <laughs> like the, is that a reference to the hair of the dog that bit you? But is that sort of like, um, is that part of lore at all? Is that you need hair of the beast or something? I don't. I don't know. See, because I've heard different things with the werewolves and everything, but usually, typically in werewolf stories, I've heard it's just you. If you destroy or kill the beast that bit you, then you can stop the lineage. You know, you can stop the curse from traveling down. You know what I mean? Right. That's what I've heard. But it's it's pretty cool to have this little lore thing in here. <laughs> yeah, I guess their own little take on it. Yeah. Um, so I looked up I thought because I thought it was also really cool that they showed some 1950s B movies on the TV screen. Yeah, they did like too. The um, so I <laughs> looked up those movies. So it's uh, the Wasp Woman and the Giant Gaia Monster. Nice are, are the two movies, which I I have not seen those. Um, but I just love that they yeah they're like okay we're doing a B 50s movie kind of episode. Let's just throw in some direct references. <laughs> um, on the screen, and I also thought 
the doctor was hysterical. Really? Oh, no, for real? He was, he was like, um, just keep soaking it. <laughs> <laughs> just keep soaking it. <laughs> yeah, and his little accent is funny. He's just, and he uh, said that like multiple times. And then what was the other one he said? He said, oh, and then I, I guess he looked at it. He's like, yeah, the worst case of chicken pox I've ever seen was that. Yeah, I just thought the doctor was very funny. I, I laughed so hard too when uh when Courage got caught by the were mole, like when he got caught by the mole and like that shaking when he got bit and he was shaking him, that scene and they cut back to it and he was just still doing it and still doing it. Like I just I couldn't stop laughing at that scene because it was just it took like a little bit too long. Like it's like one of those funny jokes that they just kept dragging on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do love when humor just get, goes on a little bit too long. I know some people are like, there was a movie I covered recently um, with um, uh, uh, Horror Fiend TV. Uh, we were talking about like, just, you know, there was some disagreement on like this one moment. And I was like, I love when the joke kind of goes <laughs> a little too long purposefully. And it's just a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, they're pulling the cringe out of you. They're just like, they want you to kind of be like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I love cringe. Like, I'm totally, you know, I'm all on. <laughs> nah, but yeah, Night of the Wearable was one of my favorites out of this batch. Oh yeah, definitely in terms of the season. I think this this will be one of my favorite episodes for sure in terms of the whole season. I like it. Just the design of the characters. Muriel's involvement was so great. I love her being kind of like the villainous character. The mole character was so funny. You know, Eustace and his silly mallet. So all the comedy landed in this one. Like you said, the yeah. music and cinematography all strong. Oh, we should have done a rankings. Or not a rankings, but at least like a top five of the season. I could, top five, I, could, yeah. I could probably do it off the top of my head. I, I have the wiki up, and you'll we'll see if you agree with mine. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I know. Um, I think, oh, am I the next one, right? Yep. Next uh, yeah. Let's so go. segment two mm. of that episode is Mother's Day. Uh, Eustace visits his mother for Mother's Day with courage. Though Eustace tries to win his mother's love, she would rather dote on courage, much to the master's envy and the pet's dismay. Uh, what did you think of this one? I think this one gave us a lot of insight into how Eustace is and like why he is who he is. Oh, yeah. she's oh yeah, like you can tell that she definitely loves courage more than him, and I can see that maybe he's jealous and envious of that for real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it very much, you know, his mother is him. Like he is his mother, and his mother is him. Like that is to a T. And I love that Muriel <laughs> refuses to go see her. Oh, yeah, that was so cute. Yeah, it was funny. She's like, no, I ain't going to go see that woman. <laughs> and I love that she clearly then does not like her, yet she likes Eustace. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, for real, because I'm like, I feel like just the vibe I got was like, oh, they would get along, but there must be something about the mom. There just must be something about her. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Unless the mom doesn't like her or something weird. You know, I could I could see the mom sort of how probably having one of those like, being like one of those like jealous mothers, like this woman's coming in to take my son kind of characters, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, you but you're right though. I think right, there's a lot. I love sort of these character moments that they give us sort of peppered throughout the season where they sort of peel back the layers on the two on Eustace and Muriel. Oh yeah. So that that was definitely this one was definitely a character piece episode because there's not too much like there's a lot of comedy in this one, but not too much horror. This is much more a character piece episode yeah. with a lot of comedy and stuff and everything and kind of showing you definitely why Eustace and Courage have the relationship they have. And this is the the second episode we've had where they went off without Muriel. So yeah. definitely trying to build a bond between them to the writers, you know? <laughs> sure. Sure. And like, so there were a couple of connections I actually noticed uh, as well. So, um, well, first the only gift that she likes that he gives her is the mirror. So she could look at herself, <laughs> um, showing how vain she is, which I thought was very <laughs> funny, but then, you know, there's a lot of focus on her wig, um, and her yeah. obsession with her hair, which then harkens back to that other episode where Eustace was trying to regrow his hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there clearly there's a lot of insecurities around their hair because obviously she loses the wig and reveals that she's bald. Um, and then they sort of, which then leads into their bonding because then they start to like laugh as they're throwing insults at each other. <laughs> so clearly, like this, um, 
yeah, this kind of explosive relationship is what keeps it going in a kind of twisted way, but also kind of cute at the same time. Oh, yeah. And, like, I'm wondering what they have. I wonder if him him and his mom have, like, what is it, like, alopecia or something? Maybe that's what they have, and that's why no, they lose their hair or something. Maybe. And they Because um, it's just well, something that happens. <laughs> we're looking at the two of them, and it, just, it seems like it's just old age. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I think it's just getting older with the two of them. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Eustace is old. I don't. They don't really give us an age, but that man is yeah seventy something, eighty. You know, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then, so how old is she? <laughs> I know for real. Like she's got to be like, you know, who knows? But it's just hilarious. I don't know. <laughs> I know that's what like the stuff in this show. It's like I love how there there's so much fun stuff about the way they care about characters and show love and all this stuff for the characters but then when you think about things logically in terms of certain stuff in the show it's just it goes like right over your head <laughs> oh yeah no it's just sort of yeah vague time like vague timelines vague time period all for it it kind of adds to I think the the absurd nature of the show Oh yeah, like this is a show that I can I can't imagine like a live action version of the show would be so interesting to see how they would oh, kind God. of execute that. <laughs> <It's> really scary. <laughs> <laughs> um I, I mean I could see like someone like a Tim Burton doing it. Yeah, definitely. He's gonna have to sort of have that feel. Yeah. Does yeah. it have to be the the nowhere and the place around it would have to be just as characteristic as probably Mario and all the characters and everything. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know if this is one you want to touch in live action. I think maybe we want to keep this. Maybe CGI animation, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But that, I don't know. Because you got you to gotta do it right. Yeah, you'd have to do it right for real. I, I don't even know who I would cast for the characters. Maybe one day, like when we do our... Uh, when we get to the movie one, too, we'll do like fan castings for like the live action. <laughs> oh, oh, but you know who the, who would probably be a really good Muriel though? Um, who? Oh my gosh, what's her name? The the I forgot her, the actress's name. She's British. She's in Harry Potter. She's the um, herbology teacher. Mrs. Sprout. Herbology teacher. Mrs. Sprout. Oh, I can't. Oh, I know. Oh, I know who you're talking. Okay. Yeah. Her name is it? Isn't it like Miriam Margulies? Is that her name? I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think she would be a good Muriel. I think because because she, she's British or Irish, or, it kind of works. Yeah. Yeah, because I think when we find out when we get to one of those episodes later, was it the little Muriel episode? She's like pretty hardcore Irish. I think. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> that was so cute. Fred didn't have an accent though. I'm trying to think, oh? her Fred. Oh yeah, Fred. Fred. Yeah, that's true. I don't think he had an eye, like a broke. I don't know. Um, ready for the next one? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Right, we're on to uh, Revenge of the Chickens from Outer Space. Correct. That's yeah. our next segment. Yeah. So the Revenge of the Chicken from Outer Space, now fried and headless. <laughs> Courage's first nemesis, the alien chicken, returns to Earth for a belated retaliation. It attempts to gain Mariel's head, but gains Eustace's instead and attempts to take Courage down, but fails and ends up being blasted by a rocket ship. So, this episode, we have the returning villain of our, like I said, first nemesis. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't see this on Max, though. Yeah, that's so weird. Yeah, that's kind of interesting is that this one we just... This is the first time we've ever seen this character. <laughs> yeah, so I guess the original pilot, right? So it's not on Max then. So does Max no, yeah. have the rights to this original pilot? I think this original pilot, I don't even think it even aired on Cartoon Network or Boomerang. Like, I think the only way you can watch this pilot is based off of buying that Scooby-Doo DVD with the movie. That is wild. Yeah, because it's not listed in season one. I'm on the Courage Wiki. Um, yeah. That's wild. So yeah, so so bizarre that they kept the episode in there though. But I guess maybe they did a whole bunch of them together and didn't think that that episode would not show. Or yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but having had no idea who this chicken was, <laughs> for real, um, it was still a fun one. Um, mm. Again, another one where the score was pretty good. I loved the the, the cheesy cliche sci fi tropes. All the wheels, all that stuff, all this, you know, all throughout the, the, the score was pretty, pretty fun. Um, 
think this is the first time Christmas got referenced in the show. Wow, I believe so. Yeah, that's true. That's a good Even one. Even though our characters, our main characters, were not celebrating, it was in the opening scene. Strangely enough, I was expecting a Christmas <laughs> episode. It's like you open with Christmas, <laughs> so I'm assuming. So yeah. then, I guess they don't celebrate. But not, not obviously, not everyone celebrates Christmas, right? So. Yeah. You know, maybe this tells us that they don't celebrate Christmas in nowhere. <laughs> um, <clears throat> How did yeah. you think about him getting the heads that the just the plunger straight to the head? <laughs> so the plungers were very funny. I will say when Muriel was getting plunged, it was very suggestive. Yep. It was a little suggestive. And I'm wondering <laughs> if... So my thing is, I think that they were kind of jokingly referencing alien probing that's true maybe yeah just yeah like it's a little thing yeah that's true i think um, i mean my mind also might be dirty and kind of going in weird directions <laughs> <laughs> but that is what i i that was i don't know i it, i was cracking up i i don't know if i should have been or if i was supposed to be but <laughs> but the and then especially different. like the nemesis was weird looking huh just a headless chicken so weird <laughs> I, you know, I dug it. The show is weird. You know, you can give me a headless chicken from outer space. I guess it had a head at one point then. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he right. wasn't fried. And he wasn't fried. So he did have, he did look different too. <laughs> so honestly, funny enough, it almost was like a, a weird sci fi spin on the headless horseman, but it was a headless chicken. Because it doesn't like, is there a version of the horseman lore where he's trying to get other people's heads? I, oh, I don't know. Because I always, when I think of the Horseman, I always call back to was it like the Sleepy Hollow and all that kind of stuff and everything. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean the Tim Burton Sleepy Hollow movie. Yeah, but I feel like there's other versions of the story. I mean, I know there's a classic Irving story, which I don't. Think, but I feel like there's like weird little offshoots where there's yeah. always like someone tr you know trying to get at the head of someone else to replace his head, right? Yeah. Anyway, I feel like I know that. I feel like that trope comes from something. <laughs> <laughs> I might be making it up. But I feel like I've well, we got it. body horror. Definitely have body horror in here for sure. If you're taking heads, you know, and putting Eustace's head on a fried chicken. <laughs> yeah, all for that. Again, yeah, another bland uh, ending, right? Um, I did love the action, though, when they're sort of going along the wire, um, you know, and, and barns exploding with yeah. the ship inside. Like, there was just like, it was just <laughs> some fun action, too, which I really appreciated. Oh, yeah. That you can tell, like I said, they're getting very comfortable, like I said, with these characters and creating these sequences and very creative with the cinematography and the camera work. So a lot of fun stuff going on in these last four episodes that we witnessed. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's no other main takeaways other than maybe weird innuendos, but that's also just me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the fact that, yeah, it would have been nice for us to get to know this character first. Like, I think it would have been cool to already know the chicken first just so we could have been like why is he coming back for revenge you know it just kind of came out yeah. of nowhere a little bit <laughs> you know i gotta see if i can find this pilot then somewhere maybe someone put it up somewhere even if you can't get it on like you know you could probably only get it on, on that one dvd but i'm sure it's I'm sure it's floating around oh yeah we could probably find it on maybe youtube or something <laughs> yeah listen i can't watch it legally on streaming give me another option <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna hunt down this dvd you know <laughs> yeah i mean maybe one day when i start collecting the scooby-doo because i think i'm just thinking about that like right now i just have some of the shows on physical media but i haven't like said dived into the movies yet that's going to be probably my next scooby-doo project eventually <laughs> oh yeah strangely enough it's not one of my favorite movies but i think i just owned it so i watched it a lot it was the scooby-doo cyber chase yeah the cyber chase i remember that one yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, i don't know if that had anything coverage related on it but <laughs> uh but yeah so did you just do next the last one yeah or is it, it's your turn right next segment. Yeah, I think so. yeah so we're gonna do journey to the center of nowhere uh <laughs> angered by both a drought and muriel's use of eggplants in cooking a humanized troop of eggplants plot her downfall deep underground <laughs> uh what are your thoughts on our attack of the killer eggplants <laughs> i think yeah that's kind of funny the way you bring it up and you say it like that it does have the attack of the killer tomatoes vibe like it has that very silly yeah. schlocky b movies vibe to it and everything <laughs> there's a lot of that in this batch right like 
chickens from outer space, you know, and like <laughs> the eggplants, yeah, the eggplant, right? A lot of B sort of flavor, B movie flavor. And they had yeah, um, what is it? They had names too. Was it ratatouille? And what was the other eggplant? I forgot. The partner one was ratatouille. Who was and then Bobby Ganoush. <laughs> Bob, Baba Ganoush, yeah. <laughs> Which I was well, so a Baba Ganoush is a very good eggplant dish. Um, but Bobby Ganoush is a very bad eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I thought it was very funny. I mean, again, the accents that they're giving these eggplants were, were hysterical. Um, obviously, you know, the reference Journey to the Center of the Earth. Um, Journey yeah. Center Nowhere, right? So we're getting references to B-movies, classic sci-fi. Um, but then I think there's also a message here, right? Because there's a drought going on. So there's about plants and I guess sort of the way we're using the land and they're probably talking yeah. about water and life and sort of all that stuff, right? The, so, and there was a couple of other episodes, I think, where they also mentioned um, they had some environmental messaging in there. Yeah. Definitely yeah. Earth friendly, like Earth Day, yeah, Earth friendly type stuff messaging going on in some of these episodes. Yeah, which is good to see. I love to see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can tell definitely from this episode, Courage is one hell of a digger. That was funny seeing those sequences and the shots with the show, like the ground, and you just see Courage like digging through the ground. He's searching for water. <laughs> yeah, and I love, I love he, he tries to be like the great egg, the great egg plan, or the great. Yeah, um, he comes back the 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 one that they're supposed to follow into battle, and he's pretending with the suit. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, "No, we have to go after the like grocery stores." <laughs> 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 no, Mary, not Muriel's fault. Um, yeah. But I like that we also sort of get another example of courage, um, reasoning to avoid yeah. conflict, right? Which is I think again another sort of th theme throughout the show, right? Is like. You know, you can kind of talk through our problems and not have to resort to whatever. Um, where instead of cooking them, they get entered in a contest and they like, oh, <laughs> like the food contest and it almost is like plays out like a pageant for these eggplant. <laughs> yeah, that was so cute too when they got the water, like the reaction. Yeah, they just like, I don't know, we got a very uh, other innuendo vibes, like with the whole maybe stoner type vibes. It was kind of weird when they got the water in them and they grew a little bit and they're like, we're taking root now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, they're little like they're little root legs. <laughs> <laughs> they're all calm. They're all docile, and they're just the way they talked. It that like their personality totally changed. It was weird. <laughs> yeah, well, they were hydrated. I guess they. Uh... <laughs> yep, I, I... <laughs> maybe I don't know. I did get some sooner vibes from their reaction. So, but you know, what? animators always do that, right? There's always little innuendos that they sneak in. And, you know, because it's animated, you can kind of get away with. You know, yeah. having it come across like as an innocuous little joke. <laughs> <laughs> also came across as that I've never had eggplant. I just realized that too when I was watching this. I've never had eggplant in my life. <laughs> one of my favorites. Well, it's one of my favorite really? vegetables. Um, well, how do you pre prepare it? I mean, so eggplant parmesan. It's great. Okay. Uh, you know, the Italians, right? So we got to throw a lot of sauce, a lot of cheese, and a lot of breading on it. So you get the eggplant <laughs> parmesan or do an eggplant rollatini. And you'll thank, you'll thank me afterwards. <laughs> Although where you live, I don't know how the Italian food is. So, you know, you might want to make it yourself. Oh, yeah. We're all homemade Italian. Yeah, that's my mom's side is Italian and Jewish so that we get all the homemade cooking we do here and stuff like, like your that. Your mom's Italian and you've never had eggplant? <laughs> I've never, yeah, I've never had eggplant. Yeah, that's one thing because I'm not, I'm not a big vegetable person. Like I'm just not. Like that's one thing. Fruits and vegetables, I get most of my nutrients from those through juice. <laughs> oh man! Well, all right, you gotta. It, listen, if you fr bread, fry, stuff it with cheese and shit, you're gonna. Oh, I don't know if you want me cursing on here, but uh, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's perfectly bread, fine. Bread, fry, stuff it with cheese. You can't go wrong. I mean, that's how you know. That's how that's the best way to cook a vegetable. <laughs> Maybe not the healthiest, but it's delicious. Nice. <laughs> Man, I gotta watch out how I talk. Bobby Ganesh is gonna come after me. Bobby Ganesh, you watch out. Yeah, we're out of two eating them. <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah, for real. That was just hilarious. I thought the names like that just really stood out to me is like the the silly names and the characteristics for a lot of the villains in these last four episodes. Like there was oh. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a fun one though. I you know, again, it, it's horror adjacent because like you said it's very like attack of the killer tomatoes so it's kind of like in the umbrella but it is very goofy and fun it's very yeah <laughs>
So now to our next segment. That's mine, right? Mm-hmm. Let's see where are we at. Little Muriel. That's where we're gonna be at. So now we are finally on to our last episode, right? This is the last episode, I believe. Yes. Last and episode we're starting with part one, yeah. Yep, part one. And it's Little Muriel. Muriel is sucked into a tornado and returns as a three and a half year old. Courage must find a way to get her back to the correct age. Very small, simple synopsis right there. <laughs> That's it. It was a very simple episode. It was um oh, yeah. but it was very it was fun. Um so yeah, <laughs> little Muriel is a real beast. Oh yeah, for real. Like I, every time I kept, I was watching this one with my son, and I was laughing because I I pointed to it, and I was just like, "That's you!" Like the way you act, and when she's like, <laughs> she's like more cheese, so less cheese, more macaroni. <laughs> oh man, and it was, and then, never mind. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I don't eat mac and cheese. I was like, oh. I was like damn. <laughs> Very funny that we're covering this. Was, today was the first time my son even tried mac and cheese. He had one taste of it at, at daycare. I don't know if he liked it, but he tried it. He's very picky, my son. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's funny that, that we're doing this one now. Yeah, I um, thought it was cute. Oh. Adorable. <laughs> but you know, though, there was, I mean, there's this one moment where she does scare Courage with the mask, right? Yeah. And I'm like, huh. So going back to sort of how we talked about, like, Eustace being a lot like his mom, I sort of feel like Muriel you know, even though she's only like three and a half as this version of her, I'm like, is there a little of that cynical vibe? Like, is that part of her in some way? Like maybe she was like that as a kid and maybe she, some of her sees that in Eustace and she yeah. sort of gravitates towards that, you know, I'm you know, like, there was a little <laughs> layer there and I'm like, Hmm. <laughs> so, but yeah, but it, but it was cute to sort of see like cards try to like be the parent. Yeah, he was definitely definitely having that you know, that frustration. You can see the patience, like oh, courage, just soaking it up and having to be so patient with Muriel because she was, yeah, she was a troublemaker for sure. She's like, I'm only three and a half years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think yeah, this is our first sort. I think sort of um, tornado in the show. I don't think we've ever seen the tornado yet. Yeah, yeah, because where they live, it looks like it would be like almost like tornado country, and the animation for the tornado was really cool. It I actually good. thought that was yeah. pretty cool. It did look really good. Um, but then again, we also get a random tidal wave out of nowhere because they're nowhere near the ocean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, again, this is our second tidal wave for some, for whatever reason. Um, <laughs> Uh, I mean, it would be funny if it was the same title. Wave. They ended up just sort of following it. Just cycling through. <laughs> it's just a them, you know? um, what did you think about crazy. Courage's uh, trick to stop the tornado? <laughs> oh, man. Him as the pilot was very funny. Um, wait, how did he stop? Wait, remind me. So I know he has. Yeah, so when he uh, takes the string and he just trips the tornado. <laughs> oh, he, trips the <laughs> he like ties a string and it like trips the tornado. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, okay. I was like, yeah. It's, I mean, very funny, very sort of just again absurd. Yeah, <laughs> I, I dig it. I use a little bit. How do how how do a tornado deages and reages somebody? I don't know, but oh yeah. And then the solution was funny from the computer is like, how do you turn her back into get her back to the age? And he's like, well, you have to throw her into a tornado that spins the other way, and that's the southern in the southern hemisphere. <laughs> 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 well, it is wild but um uh, but yeah no i i dig this one um again yeah right so so it's sort of seeing their relationship but kind of swapped in a different perspective yeah you know but um all right and this is the one too where i think yeah our pilot the guy before because he jumps out of the plane right there's a pilot that jumps out of the plane and i believe that's the guy that looks like the dude who drives the boat in the other Mark episode i believe so yeah <laughs> Yeah, they use that guy. Yeah, so you have pilot, you know, captain, <laughs> captain of two things. Like, yeah, captain of a ship, captain of a plane. Um, <laughs> you know, whatever's working. You know, every, every each one ends in disaster for the poor guy. <laughs> Sadly, with that, even though he's got a, such such a killer stellar mustache. <laughs> you know, clearly he is a fan of uh, Tom Selleck. <laughs> That's a good callback, real. He's got a sweet mustache. That's true. Uh, yeah. Respect, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready for part two? 
Yeah, let's do it. All right, so the last part for the last episode of the season, the Great Fusili. The alligator named the Great Fusili uh, arrives at the farmhouse, offering Courage and his owners a chance to perform with him and become rich. As his dark intentions unfold, he turns Muriel and Eustace into puppets. Courage must use Fusili's own thespian vanity to best him. Uh, yeah. I mean, give me an Italian alligator puppeteer, <laughs> you know, all for it. Um, the show started, funny enough, I think, with with, with Eustace scaring Courage with the mask, the, the Booga Booga mask. Yeah. Um, not, you know, not that masks and puppets have that much in common, but, yeah, kind of, you know, <laughs> I'll make a little <laughs> line there. Uh, but Pusili was fun. What did you think? I thought the character was fantastic. Yeah, he was a very dastardly, characteristic type, you know, charismatic character, you know, and I like his his little hat and his cape, you know. He had a very almost like a Zorro type look to him. <laughs> yeah. I know it was so fun and it, it gave me um can't think of, is there I mean it gave me a little house of wax. I can't think of a movie with like people turning into puppets. Um yeah, I can't <clears throat> off the top of my head. Yeah, I can't think of one like that, but it definitely has House of Wax kind of vibes going on. I'm trying to think. Besides, like you know, the living dummy type goosebumps thing. Yeah, you know? <laughs> well, kind of goes in that direction, right? People take you know becoming dolls, but yeah. not puppets per se. Although no spoilers, but there's a little something in this third season that kind of felt like this. Um, but you know, it was fun though. It um. Oh, did, did anyone become puppets in the Puppet Master? Or no, they just came to life. Uh, no, he was... Oh, no, that's not true. Actually, that is true in Puppet Master 2. That is mm -hmm. true. Because he has to try to... Remember, he's trying to become immortal. Toulon is trying to become immortal, so he ends up trying to put his body into, like, a puppet... Like, a giant puppet-type body. That's right, that's right. Yeah. So that's, it's there. So maybe, you know, maybe they're Puppet Master fans. And <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, so... The fun fact of this one, and this is sort of where I think the theme of the whole season kind of comes in, yeah. is that this is they they wrote this part as a possible series finale in, in case it didn't get picked up for another season. So sort of the idea that Courage is stuck with Eustace and Muriel as puppets, and because he always does it for love, it's him along with them kind of puppeteering the same old shtick. Yeah, so, yeah, it's it's a good one. Let's see, Steve really digging into the layers of the show. I love it. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> and actually, what it does sort of work is a, a kind of a sad, twisty kind of ending. Um, if this is where the show would would end, you know? Yeah, if it was the end, yeah, it would be like kind of yeah, that one. Ah, oh, he just has to stay with them, you know, and like he puppets, like said, puppets them every day to do the same thing because he misses them and loves them, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very sad and sweet, but I, I don't know if he says what I do for love in this one. Maybe he does. Does it end? Does it end with it? I think that's the ending quote. I think that's the end. Yeah, when it shrinks down, when it shrinks down on his face this time, that's the ending quote. Yeah, that's what he says. Yeah, so I feel like that's sort of the whole thing is like you know, as messed up as Muriel and Eustace and his relationship with them is it's like, this is like his family and like, you know, no dude, that's what he would do. Oh yeah. And that goes to show too, that usually most times like, if you're a great owner or some, a good owner and you have a dog, they're going to be there for you for life. Like for real, that bond is like never going to yeah. be broken. <laughs> or just, you know, yeah. Man's best friend there. You know, um, just, yeah, this, this character. Yeah. I, I you know, I, I, watching this season, um, and going and starting this like watch with you, it's like, yeah, like man, this 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 is a good character. I love courage. <laughs> oh yeah, courage is such a fun, rooted, like amazing character that would be a fantastic companion to any kind of adventure that you would go on. You know, if you were yeah. stuck in an adventure, courage is definitely one person you would want to have with you. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I think definitely like this is a show. I'm like, I'm happy like to revisit. Like you know, like I never, you know, I think just watching it now through a different lens i think it kind of um just shows the depth for me oh yeah 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, because watching this as a kid, I'm more just entertained by a lot, like I said, the colors, the cinematography, the charismatic characters, you know, it captures your eye, you're having a lot of fun, you're laughing, but as you yeah, grow up, you watch this and you're now, we're, we're fathers now, you know, we're adults now, mm-hmm. we have jobs now, so it's completely different to digest and watch the show now and see the heavier themes and the family themes and elements of love and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I, I can't wait for season two. We got a you know another batch of 13 episodes, All right? I think it's 13, 13 yep. across the board. Yeah. For yeah, three seasons, 13 episodes each, yeah, yeah. So, did you want to do a quick little? I'm gonna give you my top five <laughs> of the season, All right? Yeah, rattle them off. Let's see. Um, <laughs> let's see, I'm going to go back to the wiki the wikipedia so i can just see the full list in front of me mm-hmm. um but i can already tell you you know freaky fred is gonna be on there um the yeah definitely freaky fred of course the the uh king ramsey's curse yes. all right so those two i think are, <laughs> i think those are two are the given um but i'm gonna say that the oh oh okay the the water ghost that was a spec yeah the water spirit that was a special one yeah queen of the black puddle um i'm gonna say weramole is definitely up there for me and oh man now now it's hard now we're going okay who who gets the fifth spot is is (laughs) hard is this is a hard one i'm going to probably say oh maybe everyone wants to direct Oh, yeah, from Ben Tarantella. Yeah, that's true. Happy the Zombie Resurrection. That was a very good one. Yep. Definitely. That might be my top five. If I, you know, if I had to have the honorable mention, then it would be like, <laughs> it'd be like Great Fusili. I think it was. Great Fusili. I think it hit me in like all that kind of fun. It was, it was funny. It had horror moments and it carried sort of the final theme of the show. Um, so I think oh, yeah. it was sort of the best of all the little parts of what makes the show great. So that gets like sort of the. The honorable highlight mention. So like those, nice. we'll say those six. <laughs> yeah, I do like another honorable mention. Probably the our uh, snowman one was really good. I like the snowman mm-hmm. one just because the whole weird scientific, like just nature of that one. Like I said, with the, the faucet and just everything about that one, a frozen snowman. Yeah, yeah that was just such a funny episode too. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I loved it. The gene for not melting. Nope. <laughs> So, yeah, there's been a ton of great you. episodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. I can't even think what else, like other like sort of real. Oh, Shirley the medium. I love sure, that. That was a fantastic yeah. one. Yeah, Shirley. Right. She's um, one that I wish would come back. I wish she would come back um, as like somebody who would help them for like an exorcism or like banishing a ghost or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think she. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think she comes back. Actually, I think that's her only episode. Yeah. Um. Oh, and then the demon in the mattress when Muriel gets possessed. Oh yes, yeah, that was a fan. That was a classic one too. <laughs> yeah, so it was some really like solid horror like tropes and references, and so I did recognize. I did see the uh, one screenshot from the next episode because on Max it shows you like one picture from the next episode to click. Yeah, and I recognized the tree. The, the tree with a real mouth on it. <laughs> I'm like, that one looks horrifying. So I'm excited to dive into season two because I, I can only imagine they're like, okay, we got the first season out of the way. How can we like crank it up and make it extra weird? Oh yeah. Cause I think we're going to have, I think some more 3d animation stuff pop up and everything. That's going to be fun and more mm-hmm. stuff about nowhere. I think we actually learned some more stuff about nowhere. So it's going to be exciting too. Yeah, you know, definitely diving more into the lore of the town would be cool. I know Cats comes back a lot. Um, I'm like looking just briefly. So the next batch of episodes. Um, oh, she does come back. Surely. So, surely, yeah. So we have nice. the Tree of Nowhere and Robot Randy is the first episode. Then we cool. have The Curse of Shelley and Courage in the Big Stinking City in the second one. And that is actually in New York City. Ooh, uh, nice. so <laughs> and then the third episode is family business um and a thousand years of courage um a thousand years of courage. Wow. yeah about banana people 
<laughs> so we got living eggplant. Now we got living bananas. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's gonna be some pretty fun, some pretty fun stories coming up. Oh yeah, I can't wait to dive into season two, and I hope everybody who's been following along, like I said, watch along on HBO Max. That's where we are doing this and everything. And I hope you all have fun tagging along with us, diving into these episodes. Like I said, it's been a huge nostalgia fest, just really diving into them, discovering all these themes and all this stuff that we didn't really catch as when we were younger, you know what I mean? So it's a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And so we got four seasons of this and a movie. I'm all in. <laughs> oh, yep, yep, yep. So, Steve, is there anything you want to plug or anything coming up on Voices that you want to talk about or anything? Um. Nothing super specific, uh, you know. So if this is your first time seeing me on the channel, um, what have you been doing? Go back and watch the first episode of our Courage Recap. That's right. <laughs> um, anyway, Steve from Voices from the Mausoleum, me and Angel, uh, we do weekly found footage episodes. We do um, bi-weekly, soon-to-be weekly, Sunday uh, coffee news talk show. Uh, Angel just started cursed beings with al uh where they sort of pit two monster films against each other like vampire werewolf and was, sort of yeah, that's a lot of fun that has been a lot of fun <laughs> yeah and that's actually been doing really well so i'm so proud of them people have been sort of flocking to that so it's it's, it's one of i think probably probably our most successful show on the channel right now is the two of them so yeah, you know. that's, that's because I think a lot of people are kind of craving for that vampire werewolf stuff. I think people are really itching and craving for that. I think that's going to be kind of our next major event in horror is going to have the whole old school, you know, monsters come back. We're headed in that direction. I mean, Abigail just happened. Um, we had uh, the Demeter. Uh, I think Lee Winnell's Wolfman is coming Lee out. Lee Winnell's doing the Wolfman. Maggie John Hall's doing Bride of Frankenstein. I think we're now we're kind of pulling from the classics again right so that's yep. exciting everything comes back in style so <laughs> i'm all for it yeah and steve from voices from the Muslim, you can find all his links all the information we're going to have down below in the description so you can find us on twitter and x all that whatever you call it nowadays so thanks for sticking around with us all and hope you all have a safe and happy day peace out <laughs>